well we have some advantages of using the page object model and then the same stuff for this that password input password that set value and then the password that i'm receiving from the function itself is performed but the selector is not working is not working Hey masters, welcome back to Joint Media. Welcome back to another amazing video of WebDriver.io. Today, uh, well, we're gonna start reviewing the page object model in this amazing framework. Uh, well, we're gonna take a look of a brief <laughs> A description of what it is basically uh, since the version 5 of WebDriver.io it was designed with the page object pattern support in mind well by introducing the elements as first class citizens principle it is now possible to build up large test suites using this pattern so there are no additional packages required that's important to create page object models and it turns out clean modern classes provide all necessary features we need and as you can see, well, we have some advantages of using the page object model. Uh, well, inheritance between page objects, we're going to apply this right now in this video. So please watch it until the end. We're going to have lazy loading of elements. It's going to be capable to wait automatically um, for uh, some amount of seconds, right? Un until some element is displayed is displayed in the in the screen or not and also we have a capsulage encapsulation of methods and actions okay so let's go ahead uh, and well let's start uh, taking a look of the scenario that i have we're going to be using this website demoqa.com and well we have like different modules right so we have elements forms uh, widgets widgets interactions and also a small book store application that i want to use as example and well when i am uh, when i'm not logging in the web application you can see that we have like different like mini modules on their bookstore application we have login we have bookstore right we also have profile and another option here which is the bookstore api that i want to also take a look in the future uh, but when i click on login you can see that uh, over here i have like two options the username and password and also i have a login button okay when i am logged in let me show you that mm -hmm. and i am entering correctly you're gonna see that i'm gonna be redirected automatically to the profile part of the bookstore application and if i click on the login button i also have the same options the, the joint media username and also the logout button and also if i click on the bookstore i have this username and the same logout button so i i plan to have like three different layers of page objects where we are going to handle in the first line the the very first demo QA site so we can have like different page objects depending on the on the under the sub module where we are and then uh, well i'm gonna start with a kind of base page for the bookstore application and then well a small modules for login bookstore profile and bookstore api okay that's my idea let's take a look of how we can do this in in the code itself okay uh, well i have my project already downloaded in my computer the idea is that we're going to create a, a kind of folder here, which is going to be page objects. And in, under the page objects, I have created a base page, base page that TIS file here. Well, the, the first step that we have to do is actually export modules or actually default. I'm sorry, <laughs> export default and then declare the class name, which in this case is base page. OK, I'm going to open up the brackets and then uh, well, I have to declare the very first method that we're going to be using. In this case, it's going to be the open method. Let me show you why. And I'm also going to be receiving a path, which is going to be a string. OK, this is string. Uh, well, the function is going to be returning a promise. OK, and uh, as uh, with a generic, in this case, it's going to be a, a, a string. If I'm not wrong, let me take a look of my notes and it is a string. Perfect. Well, I'm, I'm going to open up the, the brackets and I have a kind of error here. And basically it is saying that cannot find name properties. Do you mean promise? And yeah, let me see. Well, promise has to be with P in upper letter, uppercase. Okay. And well, now it, it, it is saying that a function whose declared type is neither void or any must return a value. In this case, it's a string, right? Uh, so I have to well write down a return here. And this return is going to be, well, having this command here, which is going to be browser.url. 
this browser that URL is going to contain this particular URL over here. Okay, I'm going to change the, the, the this for backtick so I can use uh, ES6 and and well the, the newest and well uh, this URL is going to be well demoqa.com but well if you well notice and if you are active <laughs> actively thinking about what is happening in the screen you can see that when I click on bookstore application well it is going to have like a path or a slug right so uh, well my idea is to capture that slug using the path here so I'm going to send it over here as a path okay that's amazing then as soon as I have this base page uh, already created we can continue with the next step which is going to be create a kind of module for the books store application well uh, and this base page is going to contain like a general objects and selectors for uh, the for these four modules over here okay so I'm going to start with the a new folder under page objects and it is going to be named maybe bookstore okay bookstore and under bookstore let me just take a look of my notes because this is a lot of imp information that i have researched before and under bookstore i'm gonna create a, a bookstore pa base page okay so i'm gonna create a book store base page that ts where we're gonna have well a kind of inheritance from the base page okay so here i'm gonna start importing well the base page from well my base page itself right <laughs> there is no a lot of tricky part and then well i'm gonna import something else that is very important and it is the chainable but it is in uppercase i'm sorry chainable uh -huh. chainable promise element perfect well this import is gonna be from the web driver io a module that I have already downloaded and it is automatically downloaded when we created our project and then um, well the next step is gonna be that we have to do another export default over here and uh, well it is gonna be another class named book store base page right and this class is going to have um, I'm gonna have two different elements here let me show you why the first one is going to be that when i am already logged in in my computer and actually in the application i'm sorry i have this uh, username and also the logout button right no matter which sub module we have no matter if we are in the login uh, kind of module right or in the bookstore one we have the same information so i'm going to map these two different elements in the kind of base page okay so how we can do it basically the, the the best way to do it is actually well setting the getters so i'm gonna create a public get over here and this is gonna be username um username level label let's call it username label okay and this public get username label where which is the element that is displayed when we are logged in in our application right if we are not it is not displayed right i just wanted to show you that um let me just look in again well this a uh, username label has a kind of selector obviously right so let me show you which is the, the selector that we have for this element and in this case is the username value right so i can do something like probably a public get username label okay it is going to be a function because it is a getter right and well we have to define what we are going to be expecting from this get okay and well there, there is where we can use the chainable promise element which is a um, well imported from this particular part right and a uh, well chainable promise element and in this case we have to send promise right and then as a generic we have to use web driver io that element if i'm not wrong let me check my notes yeah it is that and once i have done this well it is gonna be a uh, well saying that uh, the get accessor must return a value all right yeah but because this chainable promise element is gonna should have re should return an element itself right and then it is saying that a function who well it, it is just the error of returning so how we can return an element right from from the 
using this syntax. So it is going to be returned. Um, and well, the basic syntax that we reviewed from the last video about selectors in WebDriver.io. If you haven't checked that, I'm going to leave a link in the description if, if you want to well also learn some basic methods that we have, some options that we have to select elements in the UI. Um, well, the element it's, it, that we need here is going to be, um, well, the selector ID username value. So we can do something like this, right? And then we can, well, create another element here. Okay. And the other element is going to be the logout button. So I can change this for logout. Hmm. Logout button, right? And well, in this case, I just have to change the well, the, the, the selector. So let me check. It is in uh, a button that uh, with the ID submit. Let me check if there is another button here that has that particular submit ID. I don't think so. It is a button with the ID submit. There is probably, I just have one over here or not. I have four, <laughs> I have four of them. Hey guys, if you remember the last video, I think that we can do something like this. We can look for the button and using equal, probably we can look for the logout button using equal in this particular syntax. Cause if you check the locators.ts file that we have in the, for the last video, well, this, that's basically the, well, the, 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 the syntax that we use for that to well, select an element with certain text. So let's try it. If it doesn't work, I'll, I'll look for a solution immediately, okay? So I'm gonna just copy this and that particular logout button is gonna have, well, this locator over here. That's it. So once that I have done this, I think that we can continue with another method, which is gonna be click on logout button, okay? Cause I wanna have, well, an automatic method just to click on logout button when I am already logged in, in my, logged in in my application. So how I can do it? I'm gonna, well, declare a public method, which is gonna be asynchronous, okay? And well, then we have to uh, declare the name of the method, which is gonna be cl click logout. In my case, you can name it <laughs> as you want. This function, well, we have to declare what is gonna be expecting of us as returning, if it is gonna be void or, or well, in this case, as a, a promise, right? But it is gonna be void because it is gonna, it is only going to be a click. It is not gonna return anything in this case. If you wanna customize it for sure, you can do it. But in this case, this promise is gonna be returning void. Uh, response okay and well now that i have declared this well i have to use await as always async await and well the await is going to be using this the name of the element that we have available which is logout button uh -huh. and use uh, well i'm not sure if it is a function it is not and then i have to well use the click method in order to click on the element Right, we're using this to reference that particular element over here with the with the, with the get. But also we can get the element in our class and in our test as a script itself. Okay, that's important. There it is. Now, uh, well, we can continue with the next module, which is gonna be the login page itself. What I'm meaning with the login page is gonna be well, when I'm not log logged in, well, I'm gonna have the username, the password, and the login button, right? And well, the, the, the idea is pretty simple and the same, right? Uh, so let me check my notes. So I, I try to avoid some kind of mistakes that can provide us a lot of headaches. <laughs> but in this case, I'm gonna be, well, inheriting from the bookstore page that it's actually already inheriting from the bookstore or actually the base page over here, right? So, uh, well, this login page is also gonna be importing the bookstore base page from that particular um, path, right? And also, well, we need the same import that we did in books or page, which is the chainable promise element here. Let me just copy and paste that over here. And well, uh, in this case, we have to declare the class uh, login page. And um, well, the next step is say to the login page is gonna be extending from the book a store base page and i think that in the bookstore base page i didn't extend over here from the base 
page. Now they are inheriting correctly. Now we have access from the login page, right? Um, to access the base page open method over here. That's amazing and important, okay? Uh, let's continue with example. Uh, now that I have this login page that TS, um, well, it is gonna be a class, right? Yeah, a simple class. Uh, well, it is. it has to be login page there. And we can continue with the next part, which is gonna be declaring the different selectors, right? The different locators of the um, login page, okay? So the first thing is gonna be a p input um, username and the syntax is gonna be pretty similar than, than the, the one that we did before. It is gonna be a public get uh, method. We have to declare, well, the chainable uh, promise element that we declared over here, right? Because it is gonna be returning an element. That's important. And here, well, we have to do a return um, and the method that we need right and in this case for example the input username is going to be well for example the id username okay there it is now that i have this well i think that i have to do the same stuff for the password and then the login button okay so input username is going to be replaced with password here and then the input username here is going to be replaced by the log in button. And it is not, <laughs> let me show you that, actually fix that login button and then password. Yeah, I think that I can password do a password input as element and input. Well, it has to be input at the beginning, right? That's the standard that I'm following. I'm sorry for that input password then we have the login button and that's it i now i have to replace obviously the selectors so for example for password we have an element with the um well did it with the id password that's good hmm. and for the login button probably we have well another selector with the id login that's good There it is. Now we have all the elements mapped. Now I want to do something else, right? I want to have a locking function to grab and well execute the input, the, the different, actually enter the different inputs and then click on the login button. We can do something like we did before to the click logout, right? So let's do it. Uh, I'm going to come here to the login page and a, well, I'm going to declare a public function. This function is going to be asynchronous. Yeah, that's correct. And while well, the login um, method is going to be receiving two parameters, right? The username string and the password string. So I can say that the username string, or the, the first parameter is going to be a username string. And then I need a password. Yes, a string too. Now that I have this, um, let me check my notes. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing good this. This login function is not gonna return anything, right? So this is gonna be a promise uh, in, in uppercase, yeah. And then, well, it is gonna be a simple void because it is not gonna return anything from, from that. So that's why I don't have any warning in there. <laughs> and well, now I have to do await this, that input username there it is, and set value, which is the command that we have available in WebDriver.io to do different stuff, right? Username over here, and then the same stuff for this, that password, input password, that set value, and then the password that I'm receiving from the function itself. There it is. Now then I can continue with another await that is gonna be clicking the login button once we have entered the input username and the password so this login button that click let me check my notes yeah everything is fine until here let me check what what i what else i have to do i think that i have to export the class right so i can access it every every well every in in every function or another class or another script that i need anywhere else that's what i wanted to say I need something else here, right? Which is the public open, right? 
function. I'm gonna just tell you why. Because I need to overwrite the base page, right, over here, this function, because I need to overwrite the path where that I want to, that, that I want to trigger, right? Um, by default, it is expecting a, a parameter, and if you remember the login page, well, when we open it, it is gonna trigger this path over here. So we need to override our uh, override our uh, function. Okay, that's important. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and do it. This public open is gonna be a function, right? And well, the promise is going to be expecting to be a string, okay? There it is. And now, using a keyword that you probably know if you are from Java or any other typed uh, language, well, we can use return super, which is gonna be access the, well, this particular return, and it, you, we can override it, okay? So super that open, and well, here we're gonna be sending the path right which in this case is going to be logging from this is lock over here that's correct there it is now uh, i think that i have all the pages that i need the page objects that i need and also as I, I as i was telling you we need a export here default and new logging page there it is there it is now we have our page objects created if I'm not wrong, probably we have an issue here with the with this <laughs> with this element. I'm not sure, but we're gonna try. Now I'm gonna create under the, our tests a new file, which is gonna be logging module, for example, that ts. And here we're gonna we're gonna be well importing what we need, right? We need to import the 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 page objects that we need. In this case, I think that I only need a login page, because well, it is inheriting all this stuff from the other ones so let's try let's try that so i'm gonna start with the a import this import is gonna be a login page from that particular page objects folder under bookstore and under login page that ts that's correct now uh, let's continue with a describe here there it is this describe is the name is gonna be for example login page suite okay and well here we have to well use a arrow function to return and know that this is going to be the describe the main describe for this then what well, we can do a before each for example right and this before each is going to have a sync function over here that needs an arrow function as start returning and well inside of this before each what we're going to be doing is basically using the login page object that we have created and here we're gonna be using the open method. It means that it is going to open the website with this lock login, right? That's the thing that we have been creating under <laughs> in this video, okay? So I think that you can understand it, probably. And if you're not, if you don't, please go back to some seconds ago and take a look of how we, well, uh, kind of overrided the open method, right? And how we send this as lock to the base page browser URL, and now we constructed the URL that we needed, okay? Now that I have this um, in the login module, I can continue with the it, right, with the script that we want. So I can do a should login, for example, and, well, we need a async return function here, right? Callback function, I'm sorry. And, uh, well, here we can do some stuff. For example, use the login page, that login function that probably you know. Uh, well, we're gonna need in the username as a, uh, the username and the password. Both are strings, right? So, uh, in this case, the, the login information that I need is gonna be John Media as a, as a username. And then we have the password, which is test1234 and asterisk. There it is. Now that I am already logged in in my application, I want to make sure that I have the correct data that I'm well logged in as young media. Next, let's, let's take a look of this when I'm entered and logged in correctly. Once again, we can see that we have the, the username in the UI as as, as young media over here and as if you remember uh, well we have mapped that in the in the bookstore base page 
with the name of the locator username label okay so let's go ahead and take a look if that exists and if it has the correct information which in this case is junk media okay uh, well the the way to do this is going to be using the await um, keyword as, as always and then we'll use the expect here and this expect is going to well have the data or return the data from the login page that username label that is the thing that we have declared here and if you remember it is returning this element over here right so now that i have this element mapped in the function we can do something like shoot um or not not shoot i'm sorry to have containing test containing it is to have con text containing that's correct and here we can see if it has drug media or not. Let's imagine that it doesn't. So we can see if it is working or not. I'm going to send drug media dot to. And well, this assertion should, well, actually kind of <laughs> explodes, right? Because it is not expecting this as, 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 a, as an assertion. It, it is junk media. That's the data that I'm sending here. So let's go ahead and let's do another change in the web driver io.conf.ts. And here I'm going to change the, the script that I want to execute. Okay. It is um, in the expects array here. Uh, I don't want to execute login module or yeah, I do. <laughs> yeah, it was already changed. That's fine. And well, I can run in the terminal in the package. So this when I have this command, which is going to be running that particular run uh, test runner file. So I can do npm run and the web driver io the script that i have in my package of json let's see if it works or not okay now it is actually executing the the web driver io uh, well test runner it probably should run in a uh, web in, in, in chrome in google chrome because that's uh, the web driver that i am using right now probably in the next videos i'm going to be using more of them so please subscribe and let a like if you want to see more content for free of WebDriver.io. I have some plans for that. It is executing one workers, all right? That's important. We only have one test too, so we don't have to <laughs> uh, worry about it. And the very first time that it is executed with the WebDriver.io, it's kind of slow, but then it is going to be kind of easier and it is going to be faster. I can tell you that it is opening the web uh, web browser here as you can see uh, now it is actually re redirecting to login button actually to the login website and as you can see well it is actually doing the stuff it is checking right now if it is drug media too and it is not so probably we're gonna have a, a failure i hope so and there it is let's see the the message here what it is failing and as you can see, well, it is expecting junk media too, but it was junk media. So it is working correctly. That's good. So we can, uh, well, in the logging module, right? We can delete the two because we don't need it. And um, I want to do something else. I want to log out um, automatically when I check this, the shoot logging, because then I want to make sure that when I enter in incorrect credentials, it is not working correctly. So uh, we have two options. Uh, I checked the cookies of this website, right? And it is automatically generating a token. This token is the one that um, helps the session to know if I am logging or not. And it has all the information of my user. If I delete this token, you're going to see that my, my session is going to be, well, logged out automatically but i also can well check the logout button why not so i'm gonna do that i'm gonna click on the logout button and then check that the username is not existing in the dom anymore okay so let's let's do it um i'm gonna do a a that's important when you are logging automatically you know that probably you're gonna be redirected to the profile one so um well i think that I can do a logging page that open if I want to, but well, be redirected to the logging a uh, module so I can make sure that the button works on that particular sub module. And then I want to do a login page that um, click logout, right? This function 
If you remember, it was from the bookstore base page, but the login page is inheriting, right? Because we're using extends over here, right? So that's important too. And now that I click on the logout button, I want to make sure that the login page username label is, doesn't exist anymore in the DOM. So we can do something like this. Expect login page that username label which is the one that we have checked before to not right to be exist that one to be existing not to be existing basically the opposite of that and well i'm gonna close the function here and let's see if it works or not mm -hmm. i'm gonna run the web driver io uh, configuration file the test runner and you're gonna see that probably it is gonna be faster than than before i hope so there it is it is taking some time <laughs> i promise that it is faster i promise that i'm gonna minimize this to see if the web driver io runs let's see yeah there it is it is executing one worker i promise that it is gonna be faster <laughs> If you run this repeatedly, well, at different instances, you're going to see that it is going to be faster. I promise that. It is running in Chrome. It is opening the web browser. And, well, it is logging on my credentials. There it is. Then it checks that the username is the one that we expected and the, logging, the logout then is performed. But the selector is not working. It's not working. Um, because when I, well, I am in the locking application here, you're going to see that when I select this selector here, this element, it has the, um, I'm sorry, the button or actually the ID submit. I know if I change to the sub module book store, I'm going to have like a lot of that buttons, <laughs> those buttons. Let's see. Button that ID submit, right? No, it, it is not actually. Hmm, that's weird. The button submit, it is working. And if I look for profile, the button submit ID is not present because the user is not authorized, but it is working. Okay, let me do it. I'm gonna change the selector here. I don't know why I was having more selectors with this ID before. I'm sorry for that, guys. I'm gonna execute this again and probably now it should work hmm. but you you understand the idea right the idea is that as soon as uh, this um, well the the, the the should login a scenario is executed well then we have the well we're gonna click on logout button so we can make sure that the logout button works and then uh, it is gonna check if the username label which is this one over here it is not ex it's not displayed in the DOM at all. Okay, so let's see. Well, the execution is taking a bit. I'm not sure why. I promise that when I was testing this before to make the video, it was a kind of faster. I, I think so. But well, there it, there it is. Now it is doing the logging for the third time. I'm sorry for that, guys. <laughs> But that's the thing when you are creating a scripts for YouTube. It is loading the application. It checks that your media is correct. And then it clicks on the logout button. It is working. And then the shoot logging is working correctly. There it is. Now let's do another scenario very quick, which is going to be it. Should not log in, right? It's kind of the same stuff, but now should not log in. I'm going to just copy the, the callback function here. So I don't have to think too much to do this right and instead of sending the correct information as young median test one two three four asterisk i'm gonna send double asterisk here so it should not log in correctly unless i have created an, an user for that that i haven't and instead of checking that the username label is present and has the correct information i'm gonna check that the username label is not displayed in the ui okay 
Um, so there it is. I think that I can run this. Let's check if it works. Probably it is gonna happen to uh, well, actually, so fast that you're not gonna see something in the UI. But we can make sure that. Um, well, that's basically the idea, right? To to check that it is not there is no username label in the UI when I perform a login with the incorrect username and password. Let's see. Let's see the results in, in the UI. Okay. Well, it is taking <laughs> some seconds to uh -huh. Let me check the, the OBS if I'm recording correctly. Yeah, I am. That's good. It is executing this. Let's see the, the, the console, right? We can see also the execution too. There it is. It is locking correctly. Check the Geo Media is present. Then I click on logout button. And well, it is probably again the, the check or actually reload the website because I'm doing the before each. And yeah, it happened too fast, but I promise that this is working because if I change this to not to be existing, right? And if I change this for to be existing, you're gonna see that it works. Let me show you that. Okay, I'm gonna run this once again. I'm sorry for that, guys, but I wanna show you that this actually works, okay? Login module that yes, this is gonna be a long video. I'm sorry, guys. I know that kind of long video, but it's interesting when you well kind of understand every single unit of what we are doing. In this case, the page object model using TypeScript in async mode, right? I think that you know that. <laughs> there it is. We're running this in Google Chrome. There is a demo QA that can log in. We enter the username and the password incorrect and now it is not working. Now it is <laughs> because it is running the first test. I'm sorry guys. But now in the second try, right, when we enter the username correct and the incorrect one, it is not displaying nothing. There is no there is no label displayed in the UI. That's why it is working correctly now. And now we're gonna have an assertion error when we check the console. Cause it is existing. Or, yeah, it is expecting to access, but it is not existing. And that's the, the thing that I wanted to show you. It is working. We're using the page object model. We're using a single mode. We're using TypeScript. We learned a bit of them. We created some uh, interesting stuff today. So guys, please let a like, let a comment too. Let that subscription, a subscription too. I, I really appreciate that because I think that we can bring more content interest, interesting about WebTriber.io. Thank you very much. This was Young Media. Please well, follow me on Twitter and Facebook and Instagram. And also I have a Discord channel if you want to check it out, if you want to share with my community, which is pretty small, but hopefully someday it grows. Thank you very much. See you in the, song, in the next one. Bye bye, guys.